I can use this one. Yeah. Ohayou gozaimasu. Good morning, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed uh, yesterday's session and had a good night's sleep. And today, it's my great pleasure to chair this keynote session by Professor Davenia Hernandez Leo. I have known Davenia since uh, 2003, 2005, when we were both in the European Network of Excellent Kaleidoscope Technology Enhanced Learning. So at that time, she was a PhD student from the University of Valladolid in Spain. And uh, she was working with um, collaborative scripts and supporting teachers uh, to make uh, learning design. Yeah. And I was working with learning analytics before learning analytics. <laughs> and uh, after that, uh, Davinia has done many, many important work in supporting teachers um, in, um, in particularly using uh, how to uh, support learning design. Nowadays, we have technology being put into classrooms and introducing to teachers. And I think teachers have a very important role in our field in computers in education. So I'm very much looking forward to Devenia's uh, keynote. And here is Devenia. Thank you. It's my honor and pleasure to be here uh, today, experiencing this vibrant, this stimulating uh, conference, this stimulating community. It's, it's my honor uh, to also have the opportunity of uh, sharing our perspective, our work on uh, computers and education, especially con uh, putting uh, teachers up to the front of relevance. Teachers are indeed a very relevant um, agent uh, in education. And um, I will be uh, proposing for the keynote the, the question, how can we support the teachers? While I will be exploring uh, our answer to this question, I will be presenting the work of uh, the research group that I coordinate at Universitat Pompeu Fabra, um, together with collaborations and different projects uh, with uh, other partners in Spain and also collaborators in other un international universities. So, the research group that I coordinate is tied. We are an uh, interdisciplinary and international research group. Uh, working, researching on advancing technologies for teaching and learning. Our research group is based on an ICT department, an engineering school at Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona, Spain. UPF, Pompeu Fabra University, is a public young urban international university. And you are all welcome to, to visit us. Our research group um, as I said, focuses on understanding how to advance technologies to support better teaching and better learning. And in most of our research projects, there, uh, we tackle this common research question. How can we support the teachers? Indeed, we are living uh, challenging times. Eh? I was um, um, mentioned in yesterday's keynote. In terms of how technology advanced, we are living also interesting times, also, uh, which can also be challenges. So our, my question to you, uh, before I start elaborating uh, our own answer to how can we support the teachers, 
is how do you imagine, how each of you imagine the role of the teachers in future learning environments? And those of you willing to participate in this very short uh, activity that will allow me uh, to show you some, uh, to further elaborate later some of the concepts that I'm um, sharing with you, you can just uh, connect uh, to this uh, link. Uh, you also have a cooler, and you will get. You will arrive to a screen like this. Can you see it below? So you have to include, you have to type your name. It could be also a nickname. Doesn't need to be your, your real name. And when you will log in, you will see a screen, a simple screen with a question, how do you imagine the role of teachers in future learning environments? I'm sure if you have uh, their own uh, answer uh, from your uh, particular research and practice perspective. I'm seeing that for the moment there are seven people connected. I need a less than people for the activity to start. So please uh, keep connecting. Now there are 11 people, so the activity will be starting. And the activity is limited in time. Huh? So please, huh? there are three minutes uh, to complete the activity. Type your answer. Submit. And then, because I see that uh, there are still some people arriving that may be joining the activity now, and there are not many answers submitted. Huh? There are four already. So we have an answer by Yoon, by Tor. But there are more, uh, more people that may be willing to submit their perspective, your, their answer to that particular question. I'm increasing one minute. And because there is limited time for the, for the, for the talk, I'm coming back to the, to the slides and will the activity just follow eh, for those of you willing to engage. This is um, this is a pyramid app activity, a pyramid activity. That I go, I go, yeah, no worries. This is a pyramid activity uh, that is supported by Pyramid App. Uh, uh, as you have seen, the first stage in the activity is to submit an answer to uh, the question that I propose. That uh, could be any task uh, be designed by the teacher. And then uh, all the participants uh, are joining in small groups in the first level of the, py of the pyramid. And then uh, they get, they have the opportunity to peer review the submissions, uh, the answers by other participants in the activity. After the review, as eh, some of you may be already uh, um, been submitting the answers, and we have the opportunity to see the answers to my question from other participants in, in the room. Then um, this, this same group will have the opportunity to further uh, discuss about the answers by looking at the level of agreement or the level of controversy, of confusion, or different viewpoints on the activity, and elaborate together a common answer to this same question. This um, can be um, uh, moving across the pyramid uh, in different levels, where small groups are joining in bigger groups, larger groups, until maybe the whole class is working together on a single uh, um, agreed answer, or the pyramid can 
have less levels depending on the design decisions of the teacher. And this is an example, even this is a kind of uh, very simple example, but we have studied that even this simple um, activity, this simple example, comes with many uh, benefits. Huh? Of course, it captures the attention of the participants in a learning session, and it promotes active learning. It enables every single individual participating in a learning scenario to recall and practice their prior learning or what has been um, tackled during a learning session. It enables individuals to elaborate their own self-explanations and to collaboratively uh, create uh, joint explanations to the questions proposed. It um, enables, uh, it triggers uh, knowledge-intensive social interactions um, that can lead to learning by looking at different uh, perspectives, sometimes uh, leading to controversy or confusion detection that is very helpful for the teacher to further continue the activity being proposed. It's inclusive because all the students can participate or have the possibility to participate in in the activity, it promotes a sense of responsibility because the students feel they really need to uh, peer rate, to peer review the submissions being done by other students, for example, and it also triggers a positive stress because of the time, um, the, the activity sequence and the time being controlled by the teacher. So very simple activity that comes with many benefits. But now, uh, the, the topic of the, of the talk is how can we support the teachers? And I will be able to see later, uh, to monitor later, your own answers. Um, I will be proposing uh, our, my own, our own answer to, to this question um, by discussing uh, first what are the teacher tasks, no? but what are the teacher tasks that we want to support with computers on, uh, in education? Our perspective, um, is oriented towards what we call the learning design cycle. The teacher is a designer. The teacher designs activities huh, for their students to learn. Then uh, the teacher implements these activities with their students. And, um, and the teacher evaluates uh, the impact of those activities. And many times, the teacher is expected to consider this evaluation for redesign purposes. Learning design is, the, is a field of research and practice that studies how educators design, we say, the best possible environments for their students to learn. Um, in this, this, this design process enable a documentation of the design ideas to facilitate their evaluation, their redesign, and sharing. Now, what can be designed? Or let's start first with what cannot be designed. There are uh, several frameworks uh, that articulate the thinking about learning design. I will use the ACAT framework by Goodyear, Cambayo, and Yeoman. This is the activity center analysis and design framework. What this framework suggests is that the student activity cannot be designed. This is what emerged at learn time. What can be designed is, however, uh, how we interact with knowledge, how students will interact with knowledge. This is the epistemic design, the concept level and the interaction with knowledge. It can be designed, this, the, the social level, whether the activity um, has to be conducted in individually, in dias, in groups, in teams, etc. It can be designed, the set, the, the tools, the resources, the spaces in which the uh, activity is expected to happen all in alignment with expected learning outcomes. I will focus on the case of designing for collaborative learning, which has been my main focus of research for um, 20 years. In collaborative learning, in computer-supported collaborative learning, uh, we know that free collaboration does not necessarily lead to learning. And therefore, design, learning design, need to happen for increasing the probability of in social interactions that uh, trigger productive learning. In the context of CACL, of collaborative learning, we have the example of CACL scripts, uh, or CACL macro scripts as a type of scripts, that are the ones that structure 
the pedagogical methods being used, uh, what we call the collaborative learning flows, which are the activity sequences, or the task sequences, the role distribution, the group formation, the knowledge uh, allocation, the resource allocation uh, to different individuals and groups. So that uh, all these uh, design elements being considered are able to trigger potentially effective social interactions. Now, how can computers uh, support teachers in learning design by considering the notion of learning design and, uh, in particular, the case of collaborative learning? Should the um, technological tools, the teacher support tools, consider theories, examples, or intermediate representations between theories of examples to really facilitate teachers uh, um, this process of designing for learning? In our research, the focus has been on intermediary, intermediate representations. In particular, uh, considering the notion of patterns as widely studied, uh, broadly accepted practices uh, that lead to, to learning benefits, such as the one that I mentioned before for the pyramid script, for the pyramid uh, pattern. We formulated what we call collaborative learning flow patterns. And uh, in the screen, you have some examples. You may be familiar with the jigsaw. Yeah? This is where uh, a problem, a task is divided into different problems. And then there are expert groups focalizing of a portion of the task. And then there are jigsaw groups where uh, the, um, the individuals are mixed, coming from different expert groups so that um, not only participation and interaction, but also positive interdependence, individual accountability, and knowledge building happens. And you experience uh, yourself, uh, those participating in the pyramid activity that I proposed at the beginning, the pyramid collaborative learning flow, uh, where individuals have the opportunity to express their self-explanations, and then small groups and increasingly larger groups uh, work together on collaborative self-explanations. These uh, intermediate uh, artifacts uh, for design that um, we formulated as patterns were later, later no, in our research uh, translated into computational essay templates, uh, integrated in authoring tools that guide teachers in designing for collaborative learning by reusing these um, widely studied practices. And this was our uh, collage, uh, our collage authoring tool that we developed some years ago. Mm, Pyramid App is, um, is a tool uh, that implements um, a particularization of the pyramid collaborative learning flow. And this is the authoring tool that enables teachers to design the kind of activities that you experience at the beginning. Uh, there are different uh, possibilities, uh, the one that you experience is one of those, but there are um, options for the teacher to um, configure different parameters of this pyramid collaborative learning flow. And we have been working on other pedagogies and thus other authoring tools, such as uh, authoring tools for um, designing project-based learning, in the particular case of um, um, developing uh, what, we, what is called by UNESCO as the competencies for sustainability, considering uh, the sustainable development goals, designing for blended learning, uh, considering in particular now an extension that we are doing to one of our authoring tools in the, in the case of the FLED project uh, for um, patterns that are related to the flipped classroom approach, in the case of the Illumin project, um, the templates are templates for research lessons of evidence-based strategies. Uh, if you want to know more about these templates and this approach, there will be a presentation tomorrow by my colleague, Mark Beasley, a present here that we further elaborate on our approach for this authoring tool. Authoring tools that also incorporate the possibility for learners to express uh, their opinions about proposed learning designs and therefore including the possibility of co-designing um, with the students. Uh, this is the case of the 
uh, tool that we developed for the Blendy uh, project, Blended Learning for Inclusion, and so on. So you've seen, uh, we've been um, developing authoring tools, uh, conceptualization tools supporting learning design. The learning design can have other uh, facets, uh, other phases in uh, when teachers are to design for learning. And these are also preparatory phases and investigation phases uh, that may happen before the actual authoring happens. The preparatory stage, this is where teachers um, decide where, what is their design problem that they will be uh, facing uh, or they will be considering when designing for learning or what is their dream, their design dream that they would like to explore later when proposing particular learning designs. Investigation has to do with understanding the context, the needs of a particular situation, and there are different tools that can support teachers when understanding the particular needs of their context. Inspiration as well, that is exploring what other teachers have been doing or have proposed to tackle similar problems, similar contexts, or similar uh, dreams uh, design dreams, um, this inspiration may be obtained in teacher communities by looking at peer examples or by looking at examples that are proposed um, in specific uh, authoring tools. As you see, there can be different tools supporting designing for learning that relate to the different stages of uh, design from preparatory to authoring, and also different pedagogical approaches. In 2015, in the METIS project, um, different partners in Europe uh, been, uh, develop, um, developing at that time different tools supporting designing for learning. We joined uh, to integrate our tools so that we were offering educators and what we called an integrated learning design environment. The ILD. And we have been extending this environment, this infrastructure, with more tools as they have been uh, uh, proposed and developed. This is not only an integration of tools, but it also offers a layer of social features, of community features, so that sharing, co design, tracking of different versions of designs can happen. This is the logical architecture of the infrastructure. What is important is that we offer social uh, services for this community layer that enables collaboration between uh, educators in the community platform, creation and exploration of designs using different uh, learning design tools, publishing and implementing in virtual learning environments through adapters that enable a level of interoperability between design and also an admin systems. And this is an infrastructure that we have been improving uh, for years now in different projects, um, um, serving also different needs. So we ended up, um, we started with an integrated infrastructure, we still have it, but we are customizing it for, different, for needs of different communities. Uh, focusing on diverse uh, uh, research and practice purposes. So we have been now building community platforms that customize our infrastructure, for example, um, for um, teacher communities that are eager to work on research lessons of evidence-based strategies, such as in the Illumine project. Teacher communities focusing on the design thinking uh, methodology in primary schools. Teacher communities in our t spills projects that uh, want to, um, to share and co-design uh, activities focused on environmental awareness, uh, including uh, activities that use um, uh, Internet of the Steam technologies that have been developed in this project. This is at the European level. Aumented assessment, that is um, assessment activities using Aumented reality, focused especially in maths and science in the Aumented Assessment Project. Another teacher community, in this case, a um, um, very unique community for another uh, European project, Cacao, 
that um, is focused on designing um, by blending cell biology, music, dance, and visual art. So this community is for co-designing and sharing activities, blending all these concepts. And this is for preschool uh, education. Teacher community supporting pre-service teacher training. Huh? So where the environment is used is, uh, to um, uh, train teachers in learning design of didactic units, of programs, but also in sharing peer reviewing designs being created by others, and also having an accumulated uh, perspective of the designs being created by years uh, in their pre-service teacher training program. The infrastructure has been also transferred to different entities, for example, to the Catalan educational system, where there was a strategy of promoting STEM education, science and technology and maths education. So um, we've been developing an, um, a customized version of the infrastructure to support co-design and sharing of uh, these ties of uh, uh, learning activities focused on this uh, type of uh, content. Together with a center associated to UNESCO in Catalonia, we, are, uh, we have developed a community platform that is focused on project-based learning for sustainable development goals, as I mentioned before. This is a community of educators in Catalonia, different educational levels, co-designing um, active, um, active learning using this particular methodology with this common transversal objective. Also, non-governmental organizations uh, articulating collaboration in the creation of educational materials in this case that could uh, serve um, social justice objectives as part of the educational objective being considered. So um, there is an increasing interest uh, in research and practice uh, of having this type of learning design technologies of teacher community environments at different levels, uh, focus um, on a particular educational centers, such as the one that I mentioned for teacher training, also non-governmental organizations, but also on transversal topics and across centers, eh, such as the one that I shown that uh, connect networks of schools, um, particular educational research and transfer projects, or serving uh, policy making strategic initiatives. Some of the lessons learned. Um, in general, the, um, the features of the platform are fitting the needs of these different communities, and we are able to customize for these different needs. The flexibility that our infrastructure provides is um, uh, well accepted. We recognize that there are multiple pedagogies, and there can be multiple editors serving learning design needs. The importance that this um, Teacher communities are not repositories, but enable co-design, reuse, and not only sharing has been key um, in enabling uh, transfer and interest of our infrastructure. We are studying motivations, behavior, and the quality of contributions depending on the teacher community context. We are identifying different patterns in the navigation depending on the community, and we um, uh, recognize, we identify the, the importance of shared knowledge and social awareness also from a perspective of supporting teacher well-being. So from a perspective of teacher well-being, uh, we have been trying to understand the impact of our uh, technologies. Um, we have been applying an ITP recommended practice uh, to assess the well-being impact but also instrument derived by the self-determination theory. Um, we've seen that in some of our communities, uh, the participants agree, and that the, these types of technologies uh, serve, um, um, help them in feeling competent, autonomous, and also related to other educators, which is benefiting their well-being. But we also identify room for improvement for example, from the perspective of facilitating social awareness and more connections between uh, community member participants. So we thought that um, data about what is happening in these communities and other different types of data could help us in further supporting 
for example, social awareness within those communities. We were using data to evaluate and understand the processes, to evaluate our technologies, but not really to serve, um, um, to nurture features of our design technologies and community technologies. So this is where we focus on learning analytics. Um, um, this is collecting data where the students and their context to optimize the activities being proposed to them, but also their types of analytics, for example, social and community analytics and visualizations. If we consider the life cycle that includes design, different phases in design, implementation and evaluation, and also teacher communities serving uh, investigation, inspiration, we can think that there are learning analytics that come um, that if well aligned with the learning design can support design. Analytics of the design intentions of the design decisions um, being done in the authoring tools can also support the design process and also the analytics of the community, what is happening in the community can also support um, better uh, social awareness of those communities. This is how with, other, with colleagues um, uh, from other universities, we propose what we call the analytics layers for learning design framework, where we say that um, not only learning analytics, but also design analytics that are metrics of the pedagogical decisions that can be observed in the learning design artifacts, but also the metrics and patterns of the design activities happening in the communities can also support um, the design for learning process. We saw that the interactions between layers are especially interesting. So design analytics can serve as a framework to interpret the learning analytics. Learning analytics support design analytics or redesign um, and so on. I will be elaborating on these different uh, functions or, case, or use cases that enable the interactions between analytics layers when supporting learning design. Analytics can support learning design. We have been um, using an approach of human-centered learning analytics or human-centered uh, analytics. So we have been involving the stakeholders um, in the design of the analytics that could better support the different use cases that I mentioned before. The perspective was essentially analytics for awareness and recommendation if we consider this human-centered approach. So when designing an analytics approach, in particular an analytics dashboard for teachers' communities, we, um, we focus on how to support the social awareness that was identified as a, um, as a need uh, in the communities that we were supporting social awareness for mutual uh, inspiration. So we were identifying in cycles using design-based research, which are the analytical indicators and the visualizations that better serve social awareness in teacher community platforms. So this is how we iterated the, these different analytics uh, visualizations and indicators approaches for the ILD um, integrated learning design environment infrastructure. The final version of the dashboard as after three iterations involving members for, uh, from four different community uh, context community platforms um, provided a results um, indicating that the social interactions increase uh, in the communities by providing these, um, these dashboard visualizations that the um, the members of the communities uh, save time when orientating themselves in these communities and when seeking for inspiration, and they were um, increased willingness in building on others' contributions. This is for community analytics. Now, a case of design analytics. Huh? Design analytics is um, uh, about metrics of the pedagogical decisions, of the pedagogical intents that can be extracted from the design artifacts, from the learning design artifacts. So for example, in, in, in this case, in this case of the Ed Cramble authoring tool, that was the design tool uh, supporting design for blended learning, 
we try to provide awareness of design decisions during the design process. So uh, there was a space in the authoring tool to visualize analytics of the accumulated design decisions, the different intents. So for example, you see here the, um, the type of, uh, I mean, uh, the, the an analytics of how, how many tasks are proposed in class or, be, or outside the class, or the different types of assessments have been, that have been proposed within a particular design, just as an example. These visualizations on the analytics were co-designed with teachers using this participatory type of design sessions. And we um, combined this interaction, we consider these interactions between community analytics and design analytics to also offer aggregated understanding of pedagogical intents in several designs. So for example, within schools, willing to understand which are the pedagogical and decisions being taken for the same group of students, but by different teachers and designing for the same group of students, then analytics could be computed by aggregating different designs under analytics. This is um, another case of design analytics. It's contextualizing the same authoring tool, but it's a different use case. In this, um, in this example, the design analytics were, was not that much focused on, on the methodological decisions, but more on the content um, level, on the knowledge base level. So it was a case for programming activities. Um, we were providing visualizations that were uncovering facets of the activities being authored from this knowledge-based content level perspective. So while designing, designing, the teacher was able to see for each type of uh, knowledge-based indicator how many activities were already considered in their design. Our results show that this type of design analytics being uh, offered on the fly while designing for learning allow teachers to reduce the cognitive load, especially in terms of mental demand while designing. It facilitates the choice of the most uh, appropriate activities without affecting the overall design time. Overall, uh, it improves the quality of the learning design and helps avoid uh, design errors. Now, with learning analytics, huh? of course, with learning analytics, when um, also in their interplay with uh, design analytics and community analytics enables the scenarios of teacher-led inquiry into their students' learning, um, because we can also, in this uh, community environment, collect evidence um, of design's impact across different um, reuse uh, of the same uh, design approaches, it also offers opportunities for community inquiry. This is about how we can support designing for learning. But what about implementation? The implementation of what has been designed um, previously uh, to the actual implementation with the students. In the implementation, uh, we are using the term orchestration together with other scholars um, um, in the field, um, which is uh, the real-time management of multi-layer activities in a multi-constraints uh, context. So this is how the educators, the teachers, manage the implementation of the activity in real time. And you experience, or some of you experience the pyramid uh, a pyramid activity supported by Pyramid App. And I will focus on how we are uh, supporting teachers in orchestrating uh, activities uh, using this, um, this, uh, um, this technology, this tool. Pyramid App, uh, we have been exploring it using multiple different types of classroom activities. Also, while um, embedded in, in what we call narrative scripts, there are longer scripts with a narrative and um, social media, uh, educational social media interventions in the context of, a courage, of the Courage Project, and there is a partner also present here um, in the room. Um, the use of the Pyramid app has been also explored in massive open online courses as a social learning opportunity that was offered together with other opportunities for social learning in the Future Learn MOOCs platform. 
the orchestration challenges were different in the different scenarios that I mentioned before. So, of course, the, the requirements for orchestrating in large scale scenarios are different than the, the, the challenges that we find in small scale uh, activities. So to support orchestration in these uh, scenarios, we have been offering, we have been exploring different types of orchestration technologies that uh, where the machine sometimes is more in control and the human is um, more in control, uh, depending on, uh, on the scenarios or the, the approaches we wanted to explore. In terms of orchestration agents uh, to support this real-time um, uh, management of the collaborative learning activities and adaptive uh, groups, we have been um, exploring uh, mechanisms for elasticity and dynamism of the, um, of the flow of activities and the group formation, and also the integration with activities happening in other spaces, so that predictions of how the, the groups will be working in the pyramid are computationally uh, computed for uh, adaptation in the, in the pyramid app. But currently, our research is more focused on the, the small-scale uh, classroom scenarios where the human is more in control um, with uh, the assistance of the machine. We have been exploring orchestration dashboard for the, for the Pyramid app, um, and there we have been comparing um, different uh, supports. Uh, the, the mirroring approach for dashboard that is uh, simply presenting the information so that the interpretation, the sense making is for the for the teaching, for the teacher, and guiding support that is relying on alerts that highlight critical uh, moments and advising features that provides not only the alerts but also further advice to take the options. Our research question in this orchestration research has been as we, um, with, um, for other scholars also eh, in our communities, um, focus on what we call the teacher orchestration load. Huh? And we want to um, explore what is really orchestration load and how can we uh, lower the burden of this orchestration load. And, and we say the orchestration load is what reflects the teaching attentive processing during collaboration, during classroom orchestration. And the teacher supporting tools um, need to lower this burden. Huh? So we have been researching on how teachers can make dashboard information actionable, how the analytics may be different when we move from learning design to orchestration, or learning redesign to orchestration. These different approaches to the dashboard, uh, mirroring but, or guiding, and how they influence orchestration, also from the perspective of teacher well-being, and in particular, the teacher orchestration load. This is the, um, the current version of the Pyramid app dashboard. We are always um, uh, improving and extending the features, but you see how the teacher is able to see uh, all the details of what are happening, including submissions, but also indicators of the uh, level of activity in, by individuals and the different groups across the pyramid and how the teacher is able to receive alerts and suggestions for intervention and also to control increasing time, moving from phases and so on. Different configurations of the, of the um, dashboard have, um, have been studied. Huh? We have been studying these different com uh, configurations to um, explore the recent questions that I mentioned before. And in so doing, we have been able to deconstruct the notion of orchestration load. So we have proposed an, a coding scheme to study orchestration load. We are analyzing um, our data that we are coding with epistemic network analysis. Um, the, our main results include that the guiding support is leading to more orchestration options by the teacher, so they um, address better the needs and optimize better, for example, the time being used, so more effective um, um, as well. Um, more targeted interventions are at the individual and the group level, and the alerts do reduce and not increase the cognitive load. Um, 
This um, study also enabled us to deconstruct the orchestration load, the tasks that the teachers um, um, conduct when orchestrating. This, uh, this includes situation evaluation, call formation, and option taking. We had experience in multimodal learning analytics um, in different contexts, for example, studying uh, the effects of the design of learning spaces, the, for example, the table shapes uh, for different um, uh, student ages, group sizes, and, and so on. And we use this experience in multimodal learning analytics to also estimate orchestration load of the teacher. So we are currently exploring the use of electrodermal activity and hair rate variability to measure um, and understand more in details the factors affecting orchestration load. Mm -hmm. um, so we've seen that the electrodermal activity really showed uh, that activation in teacher options related to uh, orchestration. However, we are seeing that the orchestrating with pyramid up in general does not significantly elevate teacher stress levels. So there are reasonable stress levels while orchestrating learning activities using our app, um, independent on the class size. Because of COVID, we um, saw ourselves using Pyramid App also in distance learning scenarios, not only in classroom sessions. And this offers us an opportunity to compare orchestration happening in in-class sessions and in online sessions. We see that the orchestration uh, is different, the, the orchestration options, and also um, and what is leading us to different um, design requirements for these types of orchestration dashboards. And this is an increasing uh, topic of increasing interest to our communities as well, as we can see in different um, workshops that have been organized uh, related to this topic of orchestrating classroom, online, but also hybrid learning scenarios. Now, um, you may be thinking, yeah, supporting design, implement also in connection with teacher communities, implementation, evaluation, um, the role of analytics, different types of analytics. Um, but nowadays we are many of us, we are also thinking more and more about the opportunities of uh, generative artificial intelligence to support different types of, of tasks. What happens with teacher tasks? I, I still don't know huh, what are the opportunities huh, um, because they come without problems and challenges, but I'm currently conceptualizing um, some ideas uh, from a human-centered uh, perspective uh, to generative AI and analytics layers in learning design, combining the notion of the learning design life cycles and also the analytics layers. And we are conceptualizing speculative functions on how generative artificial intelligence may uh, support design for learning across these different phases of the life cycle, also in connection with the analytics layers. This is the current uh, conceptualization, uh, but open uh, for, uh, for exploration, as I said, uh, not without challenges. So the um, generative artificial intelligence can serve as a co-design facilitator, guiding a role play stakeholder discussion, for example, with adaptive stimulus questions for design problem identification can serve as an inquiry analyst, generating options about the student's characteristics and needs in relation to the problem for the team to iterate towards deep investigation of the context, can serve as an inspiration hub, for example, offering a conversational browsing of designs in a community platform or extracting patterns from designs, can serve as a design tutor to generate immediate feedback about how to increase the potential pedagogical reward and quality of the designs, or as a prototyping consultant to assist when finalizing the creation of designs, when revising tests, enriching with images generated, adapting to several formats, or generating uh, codes, computational representations for platform interoperability. Can also serve as an interactive evaluator, facilitating a dynamic analysis and human readable explanation of a student's process. 
So to conclude, um, we are part of the um, people in charge uh, of answering that question on influencing what will be the role of teachers in future learning environment. The perspective being proposed in this uh, keynote, our perspective, is that teachers uh, have to be active agents caring and co-designing for better learning, but they can be supported by technologies, including learning design technologies, and I mentioned options for authoring tools and community platforms, orchestration technologies, for example, dashboards, different um, analytics layers, uh, learning analytics, but also design analytics and community analytics, and maybe artificial intelligence functions. Huh? I mentioned some are speculative. Um, we have to assess uh, possibilities and limitations. If the smart teacher support tools are to support actual practice, they should be honest, uh, mean being aware and transparent of their limitations. They need to respect human centrality, teacher centrality, and agency in the design process. And they should care for ethics and teacher well-being, or hard well. Huh? One of the many things I've been learning these days um, is uh, the, the, this gesture, right? Teachers care. Let us uh, care also for them. Arigato. Thank you, Lavinia, for the very informative talk. And uh, we have uh, uh, time for questions. Uh, so please raise your hands if you have uh, questions. Oh, yes. Who come first? <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. It, the talk was very informative. Uh, uh, oh, I'm just asking, uh, will you be showing also the results of the Pyramid Up activity that, you, uh, that we've done earlier? Uh, that's my only question. Oh, thank you for the question. In fact, I am, you have on this final slide, you have um, a QR to the slides. It, it uh, goes to a, a temporary version of the slides that I will uh, enrich later with your answers to the pyramid activity. So after the talk, sometime after the talk, you will be able to check your, the answers of the pyramid activity in, this, uh, in the slides. Uh, okay, so you'll be inserting the, uh, the results of the pyramid up activity in the slides later? Exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. Thank you. Do we have uh, more questions? Oh, yes, Kurt. You showed us many tools that's, and apps that have been designed. Can you give us, a, a, again, a remind us of the scale of the group of the teams and the participants that are involved in all this? And, the number of years, you said 20, two decades, but uh, intensively you've been developing, I assume, for the last three, four, five years. Can you give us kind of the, the recent history and the scope and size of your teams? It, in, it depends on the, on, on, on the case. Huh? So for example, in the case of the Pyramid app, we have been doing um, research with different uh, group sizes. I don't know if this is the question, from small classes to large classes, over 100. And uh, also in MOOCs, there were, you know, uh, more participants, but it was happening, you know, more in a different uh, pace. Um, in terms of the teacher community platforms and teacher communities are at the level of uh, an educational center of as a project. So very small, only teachers participating in a teaching innovation projects. And in other cases, such as, for example, the teacher community platform that we customize for the Catalan local government has thousands of participants of the um, teachers in the, in the school and the schooling system in Catalonia. But it depends, huh? It must be a real challenge to keep everyone 
uh, committed to the different causes that you have, missions and so forth. Exactly. I, I imagine your team meetings are quite large. Ah, my, uh, my team. Ah, you mean the team? Yeah. We, I think in the picture I was counting yesterday we are 15, but it's always, you know, it's, uh, it's always changing. We are uh, from 15 to 20 people in the group. It depends on the, it depends on the projects that we have huh? every time, but we have from uh, senior researchers, postdocs, PhD students, and we also have research assistants, um, different undergraduate and graduate students, and also um, one main software uh, developer, scientific uh, software developer. We really want to develop tools not on, that could have an opportunities for transfer and social impact. So we, for us, it's very important to have this role in our research group. And the, even though development is also being done by assistants, by researchers, but also in collaboration with the, with the scientific software developer. Well, congratulations, it's like running a mini company. <laughs> uh, thank you for the talk. I enjoyed particularly the, uh, the collaborative learning uh, tools you are developing for fostering collaborat collaboration and crowdsourcing. Um, I, I was checking a bit uh, uh, your recent uh, your articles about this, but uh, could you please tell us uh, whether you, you tried different strategies for forming the groups like uh, homogeneous or heterogeneous uh, when you're doing this kind of uh, pyramid app? Or, yeah. Yeah, thank you for the question. So in terms of group for formation, we have been exploring, as you said, uh, these different approaches using constraint optimization techniques, essentially. Um, it depended on the, on, the, on the scenarios and the purposes. So for example, for this, um, in, in, in the MOOCs scenario, Massive Open Online Courses, we, uh, we had the challenge of not knowing who will actually participate in the collaborative learning activities. So we were predicting the level of expected participation in future activities of the members in the MOOC platform, and depending on that, we were proposing the groups in the pyramid activities so that we were um, guaranteeing a level of participation within the group. So we were proposing group sizes um, um, and group formation. Um, this is one, one example. Um, in other cases, what we try, uh, we explore is how, um, to what extent we could identify different viewpoints, controversy in, in the students' um, submissions so that we can also propose groups that were um, having a, a, a higher potential for knowledge intensive discussions. So this is the two examples uh, of group formations that we explore. So heterogeneity in, from this perspective, controversy and different levels of expected participation. So a level of, of participation is guaranteed by each group. Thank you very much for the uh, talk, the, the keynote. Um, I've got a question about the last part of your uh, talk, the AI edit design and authoring. So we're working on um, helping uh, dental instructors to create VR material for the very complex VR and haptic machines they have in their labs and they don't know how to, how to use. Uh, they're very, the, the material that's been developed for those machines is, is very poor, it's is too limited. Um, and by talking with uh, those dental instructors across uh, different dental schools in the UK, we came across this idea, the concern they have of pedagogical ownership. So they're happy, you, uh, they feel that yeah, they need some, something you know, like AI edit, they're not too sure how, but AI, they think that might be the solution for them to create those 3D models and, 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 and use cases that they don't have the material for. Um, but this idea of pedagogical ownership is a concern. They want to keep ownership of the instructional design and uh, so I, I didn't mention this, didn't use this term of pedagogical ownership. I'm just wondering if you have some, uh, I don't know, some, some, some thought or, or some work you've done on this, on this idea of keeping ownership of the, uh, the instructional designs. Thank you. It's, it's, it's indeed a good question because it's, it's a very practical question that um, influence adoption. Yeah? Um, because teachers, um, um, they want to be recognized about, uh, for, their, for their designs, they want to keep you ownership, and these platforms are enabling sharing 
and reuse of the designs be created. So I mentioned that we have a tracking system, and the tracking system is proposed in a way that the history of authors is always maintained and recognized with the changes being done when the um, designs are being reused. And we are using Creative Commons licenses um, in the materials. This is explained in the terms and conditions of the platform, so they, this is explicit and transparent. And then we offer this history of, you know, of authors across the reuse of the, of the designs. But in this, uh, this is uh, um, a very good question because yeah, it really influences uh, practitioners' adoption. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> On behalf of the uh, AFC and conference organization, we'd like to present you with a certificate and a present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Arigato.